Hello, Morgan Uber for the Big 12, and we are just 24 hours away from the NFL Draft. Right now, I am so excited to be joined by Ross Blacklock, defensive tackle from TCU. Ross, how are you doing right now? I'm doing really good. I uh, can't complain. Uh, just trying to figure out what's going on in this weird time with Corona and everything, but, you know, still blessed. Um, just waiting to hear my my name get called in the next 24 hours. When you were five years old, you wrote a letter to yourself wanting to play in the NFL. Now that we're just 24 hours away from potentially that moment for you, how are you feeling? What emotions are you feeling leading up to the draft? Yeah, like it hasn't really hit me like super, super hard. Like some nights it hits me. Um, some nights it's, it's hard to sleep because that's all I'm really thinking about is just playing and being in the draft and my dreams actually coming true. That letter I wrote, I was, that was my first probably peewee game playing a pop Warner football. And I always tell my dad, like, I want to go to NFL. I tell my parents I want to be an NFL football player one day. So, you know, I, I guess the the feeling's here and it's, it's coming. So, I mean, I can't be, more, I'm more excited than ever. I want to take a look back at your career at TCU. You missed the entire 2018 season due to a torn Achilles. And then you come back and have this monster junior season. You finish all Big 12 first team. What do you credit your strong comeback to? Um, our glory to God, most definitely. Without him, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be able to be talking to you. I wouldn't be in the, having this opportunity that I have to be in the next level. That's definitely my family, my friends, my support system. I have a real good support system. But yeah, they just guided me through this whole process whenever I was hurt. Just I try to think more of the positive than the negative. You know, my thing is when you're dealing with stuff like that, you got to go through something to get to something, you know. So I had to go through the fire. I had to put myself in the fire just to be able to come out and come out a better person than which I did. So and I did have a pretty good year. But, you know, I, I still could thought it could have been way better. But for a comeback, like for an injury like that to happen to me and come back earlier than expected and then play good like that, I think is a pretty good positive. Going off of that, you have your own brand, and the name of that brand is called Underdog Mentality. That's dog spelled D-A-W-G. Where did that name come from? What's the significance behind it? Yeah, like, you, when you playing, you know, whenever you're a football player or you playing sports, you just got to be a dog. So, like, but the underdog the whole phrase comes really just from, you know, believing in yourself. Um, don't let anybody tell you that you can't be nothing in life. I'm, I've been an underdog my whole life since I played sports. People, I'm doing things that people expected me not to do. Um, I remember people laughing at me when I was in middle school, high school, you know what I'm saying? Like, just, like, uh, people always have their own opinion of you. At the end of the day, you know, you're your own person. You're your own, you're your worst critic. You're your own coach. So if you know that you're putting in the work and the time and you and you believe that, your abilities can be far beyond what you what, what they can be you know then do it you know don't let nobody stir you wrong or say you can't do this can't do that but that's kind of what my brand represents i want something for athletes to be able to you know gravitate to and represent them and something that they can relate to as a player you know so i feel like my clothes brand i want to do a whole bunch of stuff with my brand but i'm going to start off with clothes you know just it's like a comfort factor you know when you got that underdog brand on you know you know, you unstoppable. The sky isn't the limit. That's kind of what I always say. You know, there's more than the sky. So I can't wait to see, you know, where that goes in the future. Uh, you know, looking ahead to Thursday, what are your plans for NFL draft weekend? Yeah, so I'm gonna just be with my family, my mom, my dad, my sisters, um, a couple of my uh my friends from back home and guys that I've been with my whole life uh, since I was kids. Um, just gonna celebrate this moment in the house. Um, can't go nowhere, can't really do nothing, but we're just gonna celebrate this moment and just, you know, live it up that night. You mentioned your dad, Jimmy. He's the coach for the Harlem Globe Trotters. He was a athlete himself, played basketball at the University of Texas and with the Globe Trotters for 14 years. What's one piece of advice that he shared with you that's really stuck as an athlete and as your father? He uh, always told me to have the edge on people. So, you know, go the extra mile, do everything that the guy that you're your opponent or um, the guy you're competing with wouldn't do. So whatever that's extra, whatever sprints, workouts, you know, extra ways, extra doing some more than what you are told to do or you need to do. Um, always be on top of everything. Never take 
any sport for granted. Never take something that you work so hard for that you love for granted because it can be taken away from you. And I learned that a lot with my injury. I overcame a lot. So that was that that, that dad moment came in and that speech came in my head a couple of times. So that definitely was the advice he gave me. Ross, thank you so much for taking the time to join me today. Very excited and looking forward to seeing where you end up. We're all rooting for you, and best of luck in, in the NFL. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate it. Thank you.